Hey, it's me, Scythe, and welcome to the SVS Crate. A quick shout out to Mizda, I hope that's how you pronounce your YouTube name, for showing me the strategy to interface toolboxes to the portable storage interface via making the toolboxes the entity. I had tried the same strategy inverse by trying to interface an entity with a storage vault into the toolboxes, but unfortunately, the portable storage interfaces can't interface with the toolbox directly. It can only interface with it if it's part of a contraption, which I was not aware of, so thank you to, once again, Mizda for showing me that strategy. I've made good use of it here in the SVS crate, the SVS standing for the Swap Vault System. Because, as I had to do with the original 9box, the swap vault allows you to avoid things like slot stick, stack lock, etc. I'll give you a bit of an idea of how everything runs and show you a bit of the interior as well as I do so. By default, the vault is on idle. Idle means essentially that you can access any of the toolboxes, nothing notable is running, and it's safe to grab anything as you wish. The lower button on the three lamps is the restock slash swap mode, which now features logic which allows it to restock, swap the storage, and stop swapping once it's finished all by itself and then switch back to idle mode all for you. This means you don't need to worry about timing it, watching till when it's done. Once it's done, it'll swap itself back to idle and you're good to go. I'll give you a quick demonstration, but first, what's this dispenser doing here? Well, I'll show you. I was having difficulties with the schematic system, where the schematic would randomly place the minecart in an entirely different location, for no apparent reason. Uh, to solve this and to give a bit of a workaround, I've used a dispenser, which you can put your carts in, you push the button, and the minecart will be deployed inside the cart assembly. This allows you to replace the minecart if it breaks for whatever reason, and it means you don't have to worry about the schematic messing up the minecart's placement. Now that we have the minecart in place, let me show you how it works. Your input barrel is the barrel on the top left of the front of the crate, and you can put whatever items you want in there. For this, I'll just grab some warp nylium and put them into the barrel. Once they're in the barrel, they begin going into the storage system. They go into the first crate, exit into the encased fan segment, and then they swap to the upper crate. The upper crate acts as the main storage, giving you the full capacity of a max size crate that can refill into your toolboxes at any time. The toolboxes get refilled, if I can get back here, get refilled by this brass funnel. The brass funnel goes directly into the portable storage interface, and the portable storage interface exposes all of these toolboxes to that one funnel, allowing you to refill any of the toolboxes from the funnel while maintaining their filters. This means that any item that goes through, as long as it's matching one of the filters in the toolbox, it will go into the toolbox and whatever is excess when the toolbox is full goes back to the top vault and remains in storage. To restock your toolboxes from the storage, now you can simply press the lower button. It'll run the restock all by itself. Once the restock is done, it then swaps the items back to storage once again by itself and it will even turn it back to idle so you don't have to worry about a thing. Once your items are in storage, you can then request any item from your storage via the item request system. The item request system allows you to simply request any specific item in any amount up to a stack, which prevents you the hassle of looking through the very numerous amount of toolboxes you may have attached to the system. I'll give you a basic demonstration of how it works. I'll remove one of the filters in the brown toolbox and place a stack of iron ingots in. I can even 
use this as a demonstration for the restock. Once the iron goes into the upper vault, I can simply press the button. It will swap the items, restocking the crate. And now my iron is in the system. Once my item is in the system, and if I wish to request it without looking through the toolboxes, I'll simply grab an iron ingot, and you place it in the filter of the brass funnel. Press the button if you wish, or you can select a specific amount. So I'll select seven iron ingots. I press the button, and seven iron ingots are dispensed to me, and the storage gets partially swapped. And look at that, exactly seven. I'll do that again. Push the button, seven ingots dispensed. I can change this to any amount I want. I could have 21 ingots. I press the button, and look at that, 21 ingots gets dispensed. This works for any item, and when you want to clear the filter, you just right click, and it goes back to fresh. If the storage gets over full, or for whatever reason an item can't get into the system, the overflow items will go into this barrel. It's the same functionality as the overflow on the 9 box, it's just there as a safety precaution. And lastly, around the back, in case, for whatever reason, you have to empty your storage vault, you have the empty switch. The ever classic empty switch. Flip the switch, and it will begin emptying your entire storage into this barrel. Now, obviously, there's not enough space in this barrel to fit the whole storage, so you will want to keep an eye on it, just in case. Now, one important thing on setup that you will want to make a note of is the redstone links. By default, they're all running on yellow wool 1, yellow wool 2, and double yellow wool. These are the top, bottom, and double frequencies of redstone links. If you were to build, say, more than one SVS crate, or say you were to have any other redstone links running on yellow wool as a signal, they will all be conflicting with each other. You absolutely have to have them on different channels. And the easiest way to solve this issue very, very permanently is you take a book and quill, and you just write random stuff in the book and quill. Sign it, random title, close it, and you just need the one book. You just use the one book, and you just, you see yellow wool, you replace it, and it'll, it may start doing some stuff, it's fine, don't worry about it. It'll start running uh, temporarily. No major damage will be done by this. Even if it's already running, even if you already have it set up, you can just start changing these one by one. And this is very important to avoid signal conflict. And it's a one and done solution. There's no need to do this more than once. There's only a few redstone links on this build, so you just do those, and you're done. That's it. Now you will never have to worry about signal conflict ever again. It's done, it's fixed, and it's practically encrypted. Congratulations. You can then throw this book away, you never need to use it again, and if for whatever reason you have to change the links, you can just make another book. It'll be fine. Regardless, if you've watched up until now, thank you very much. I did not expect the last video to get nearly as much traffic as it did after uploading for nearly six years on and off now. A lot of the videos are unlisted, but still. Did not expect the storage system to sort of take off as you will. Regardless, thank you for watching. I'm Scythe. And subscribe if you're up until this point, if you're watching up until this point, because there is going to be more 100%. But regardless, thank you, have a good evening, and as always, be careful out there.